There's some exciting news in the gardening world. There's a new USDA plant hardiness zone map. And about half of the United States has moved up to the next zone. Join me today as I discuss the changes in the hardiness zone map, how it affects you, and I give you some behind the scenes look at the process to get this map out. Hi, I'm Gardner Scott, and I'm sitting in my Zone 5B Colorado Garden. And for you regular viewers, you know that I've said that before. My zone did not change with the new map, but it was close. This whole area of Colorado used to be Zone 5B. Now, almost all of it is Zone 6A. The line of the new map is about a mile and a half that way. I was close. And I know that because the new map is very precise and you can get down to one half mile increments in your neighborhood to see just exactly what zone you're in now. The zones on the map identify the average annual extreme minimum winter temperature. And it's drawn from data over 30 years, from 1991 to 2020. The most recent map was done in 2012. It's taken 11 years for them to update the map, and we can expect this one to be around for a while. But the information is much more precise than what we had in the previous map. The data for the 2012 map was drawn from just under 8,000 weather stations. This new map has data drawn from 13,412 weather stations throughout the entire United States. That's giving us a much more accurate picture of localized weather. And when we as gardeners see what's happening in our garden and we can see that it's warming those minimum winter temperatures aren't as cold as they used to be, it's now represented in the map, which is why so many have moved into a new zone. I'm excited for the new hardiness zone map, not only because it's more accurate and it validates what many of us have been seeing over the last decade or two, but because I actually got to work on the team developing the final release of the map. Back in February, the USDA Agricultural Research Service invited me to be part of the technical review team. And over the course of weeks, I was able to review the map months before it was going to be released. And I actually had some input on the map in my home state of Colorado. I'll show you some of that behind the scenes in just a bit. Right now, let's take a look at the new interactive website that allows you to get information for your garden. If you click on the link that I have in the description below, it'll bring you to the web page of the 2023 USDA Plant Hardiness Zone map. Now the new map has the same 13 zones as the 2012 map. And each zone is a range of 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So zone 5A runs from minus 20 to minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit. My zone of zone 5B is minus 15 to minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And remember, this is an average of the annual extreme minimum winter temperature. Looking at the whole map, it doesn't look that much different than the map that we had in 2012. Here's a different representation of the 2023 map showing the colors. If we switch to 2012, you can see the change. 23, 12, 23, and 2012. This gives a better indication of the change that's taken place. Now, going back to the web page, above the map, you'll see where you can put your zip code in. So I'll put a zip code for 
Colorado Springs, the first house I moved to. Click to zoom that zip code, and the map is going to zoom in to the neighborhood level. I'll X to get rid of this bar. And this is where I first lived when I moved to Colorado Springs. Here's Keystone Circle. It's clearly in zone 6A now, and it used to be 5B. Off to the left-hand side, you'll see the map layers. If you click on map layers, and then come down to the plant hardiness zone, click on that, the zones actually disappear, and you're able to find your specific house. There's the house that I first moved into. Click again, the hardiness zone map returns. You can zoom out so you can get an idea of your city and streets, but you also have the opportunity to click here on transportation and take away the streets or add the streets again. So you can see how this map is completely interactive for you to find your zone. And each of these blocks represents half a mile square on each side. You can see that the online interactive map is pretty easy to figure out, and you can zoom in down to those half mile squares. Back in February, as part of the technical review team, I sat on my computer at this table and did exactly that. Basically, taking the map for a test drive before it was going to be released to the public. And I did find some things that I thought could be fixed corrected, maybe modified. And here's some of what happened. There was one area of the map in Colorado that I sent in a question. It's surprising that the buyer's data is similar to 2012 when the stations to the east and west showed such dramatic warming. And the response that I got from the review team is that they reviewed it and their action was yes, the statistic for buyer station is far colder than its mean minimum temperature, and the Eastern Adam Coag Met Station is far warmer. Both are significant outliers and were removed from the data set. The new map is a solid zone now. The whole area has the same reading. And then interestingly, in another area, near Golden, Colorado, I mentioned that a few blocks seem to conflict with the warmer blocks nearby, and they did the same thing. The new grid was produced after the removal of that buyer's area that I just talked about, and they updated the map with a new one, much more consistent borders. I'm quite proud of that. Not only that I was selected to be on the technical review team, but because I did find something that I thought could be improved, and more importantly, the developers of the map listened and did make that change, because the whole purpose of the hardiness zone map is to be used by gardeners like me and you. How we use the map really hasn't changed. It's mid-November as I sit in my Zone 5B garden, and the fact that it's 5B has no bearing on what's growing and what's not growing. Today's a relatively warm day, but every night drops below freezing. So my vegetable garden beds are bare. The plants I was growing are dead. I've cleaned up the beds, amended the soil. I'm preparing for next year's garden. And when I start next year's garden, the zone really doesn't matter either. I'll grow the same vegetables, the same types of plants during the summer as I always have. The plant hardiness zones are all about the winter. It's really focused on the perennial plants that you're growing in your landscape. The fruit bushes, the trees, can they sustain the extreme cold temperatures that you have in your garden? And so the average of those extreme minimum temperatures is what the map is all about. When you're choosing your plants, you look at what zone you're in so you match the plant to your zone. 
So the new zones that many of us find ourselves in may give us the opportunity to grow some new plants. It doesn't mean that you need to rip out the plants that you have. Anything that grew in a colder zone should be able to handle your half zone higher temperatures with absolutely no problem. But for me, in zone 5B, wishing I could be in zone 6A, there are a lot of plants that can handle the zone 6 temperatures but not the zone 5B temperatures. Because the line is only a mile and a half in that direction, I can start looking at the microclimates in my garden. Those zones that are naturally a little bit warmer. The front side of my greenhouse, the front side of the shed, the one that faces the sun. Those are microclimates that tend to be warmer than the rest of my garden. Because those sections of my garden are warmer, they're probably able to sustain some of those zone 6 plants that I'd like to grow. And the possibility of some warmer winter temperatures, because I'm so close to the border, also means I might rethink some of what I'm going to do in my greenhouse over the winter. I'll be monitoring the temperatures to see just how cold it gets, but if I can do zone 6 plants outside, I should be able to do zone 7 plants in my greenhouse. But this really doesn't change much of how I garden on a regular basis. Even with some of that experimentation with a higher zone, I've always recommended that gardeners get the plants of a zone lower if they can. All of my apple trees are rated to zone 4. I even have some that are suitable for the extreme cold of zone 3. That's because while the 30 years is an average when we use the mapping profile, we can get much lower temperatures and much higher temperatures. So some of the most extreme temperatures that I've had here in Colorado have gone much past that zone 5B rating. And I've been glad that I had perennial plants that were suitable for those more extreme temperatures. It's completely up to you, but this does open up some new opportunities. And now is a great time to put in your zip code into the interactive software on the website and find out if your zone is the same or if it's changed. If you want to see more about the Agricultural Research Service, I did a tour of America's Seed Bank, and you can see that video next. I'm Gardner Scott. Enjoy gardening.